Welcome to Tech Talks. Our IT edition today is focused on taking an incremental crawl, walk, run approach to an AI ops journey with Splunk. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value our customers and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these best practices and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. My name is Eric Hennessy, and I'm a consulting solutions engineer covering National Defense Counts at Splunk, specializing in our IT solutions. In this role, I assist our account teams in identifying where our IT solutions can best help our customers solve problems. In this tech talk today, my goal is to illustrate just how easy it is to take that first step on the way to an AI ops use case. First, let's go over what we're going to talk about today. We'll cover some of the questions Splunk customers might have when adopting an IT use case. We'll talk about the progression to an AI ops use case using monitoring of infrastructure metrics as a foundation. I will then walk you through a live demo of the simplicity of adding metrics collection to an already existing Splunk instance. Finally, we'll cover some of the additional resources available to help you take advantage of IT capabilities in Splunk. Our team will be available for Q&A throughout this presentation using the Q&A widget within your screen. And if you watch a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Tech Talk discussions in the Splunk community at splunk.com slash tech talk. As we get started, I want to point out that I may use the terms AI ops and IT ops almost interchangeably throughout this presentation. But for clarity, IT ops is generally the term I'll use around classic IT monitoring, and AI ops refers to the more modernized form of that with machine learning pr driven predictive analytics, dynamic alert thresholds, event management, and anomaly detection. This is the realm our premium IT solution, IT service intelligence, operates in. But getting there can sometimes seem daunting to people, so we're going to lay out here how best to get started. Customers wishing to implement an AI ops use case for Splunk, whether they're new to Splunk or already using it for something else, are often faced with questions over just how to get started. Maybe you're already using Splunk for simple log aggregation or for a security use case. You may have questions around just what data sources are important to collect in Splunk for AI ops and IT ops use cases, but one thing all these use cases will have in common is that they should all get started with collecting metrics around infrastructure performance. Historically, customers adopting Splunk go through a maturation process where they first adopt Splunk for a simple log collection use case. Maybe they did this for compliance reasons, or to assist in incident investigation and troubleshooting, or for a variety of related reasons. Once users became conf comfortable with using Splunk, maybe a layer of sophistication was added with a more targeted security use case, and additional apps like Splunk Enterprise Security were layered on to the existing Splunk instance, and more data sources were added to support that use case. Since Splunk has been fairly prescriptive about what data sources were needed for each of the various security use cases, there wasn't much uncertainty about what needed to be added. But things get a bit more ambiguous when customers look to adopt AI ops use cases with, uh, with Splunk, as there's often confusion around just what sources are appropriate for a given IT use case. Some questions people might have are things like, what OS logs are helpful for monitoring the infrastructure? What can our application logs tell us? And do they provide any insights into performance and availability? The easy answer to the question of what data to collect first is metrics. Splunk has always had event indexes, but with the 7.0 release, Splunk added support for metrics data. Events are unstructured and don't always yield numerical data, but are very useful in understanding why something happened. Metrics, on the other hand, are structured and very useful for conveying in near real time numerical measurements such as CPU and memory utilization, disk space usage, network stats, and so on. In our demo scenario, which may only be different from yours in terms of scale, we have a simple all-in-one Splunk instance which, in which a single server operates as indexer, search head, and deployment server. We have six systems, three Windows and three Linux, already configured with a Splunk Universal Forwarder to send some of their event logs into Splunk. We're using the Windows and Linux add-ons to collect the logs appropriate for each OS, and our deployment server is configured to manage those add-ons for us, so that when we need to make a change, we only need to make it on the deployment server, which will take care of pushing that change out to the forwarders. This will make it very easy for me to add metrics collection to support my IT monitoring use case. 
So with that, and without further ado, let's get on with the demo. So first, uh, let's take a look at what we have in our uh, Amazon EC2 environment running for this demo. Uh, here in the middle, you see I've got my uh, all-in-one Splunk system. That's the um, combination indexer, uh, search head, and deployment server. And above that, I've got my three Linux forwarders, and below that, my three uh, Windows servers uh, forwarding event data into Splunk. Over here, uh, I've got my uh, Splunk instance that I'm looking at right now. And uh, first, I guess I'll take a look at my deployment server through forwarder management. And you see I've got the, uh, the six forwarders uh, reporting into the deployment server. And they each have their uh, respective um, technology add-ons deployed to them through the deployment server. So the, um, the Linux uh, forwarders have the, um, the TA Nix uh, installed and the Windows forwarders have the TA Windows installed. It's those TAs that I'm going to be modifying uh, the config for to, uh, to get metrics forwarded in. So coming back here to the search interface, um, I'll follow a worst practice here and do a search on index equals star, um, something you should never do at home. And I will search over the last 15 minutes. <clears throat> and you see I've got some um, events being forwarded in. Um, these look like uh, Windows systems. This one down here looks like um, Linux system. Not a whole lot of events. Uh, I don't have a whole lot configured for the purposes of this demo. Um, just a couple different source types, uh, win event log source types for the Windows systems and syslog source types for the, uh, the Linux systems. But all six uh, forwarders are sending uh, events in. Now to check if I'm getting any metrics uh, reporting in, really simple, uh, just got to look at the analytics tab over here. This is the metrics workspace. <clears throat> And the only metrics I see are the internal metrics that Splunk itself forwards into. Um, you know, if you wish, you can go in here. If you've got a um, more or less current version of Splunk, uh, you should have these metrics in your own uh, Splunk instance. And um, these are just metrics that Splunk uh, feeds into itself to, uh, to do that sort of self-monitoring, sort of like your um, internal and introspection logs. But we have no metrics uh, that are useful for uh, system monitoring because we're, we're not forwarding anything like that in there yet. Uh, the analytics workspace uh, for metrics is one way to uh, work with metrics in a sort of freestyle uh, form, if you will. Um, the other way is to use apps that are pre-built for, uh, for displaying metrics. So I've got IT Essentials work uh, installed on this uh, system, and I'll pull that up. And it should tell me that there are no, uh, no entities found. Uh, there it is. Um, there are no entities because I've got no systems, again, that are reporting usable metrics in. So, to remedy that, I am going to go over to my terminal session and start modifying the, uh, the inputs.conf uh, files on the deployment server for the Windows and the Linux uh, add-ons to uh, configure them to, to send metrics in. <clears throat> so we'll go to opt, splunk, Etsy, deployment apps, and you see I've got Splunk TA Nix and Splunk TA Windows there. Those are my um, apps that are being managed by my uh, deployment server. So I'll modify the uh, Linux one first. And I always want to work in the local copy of the config files because um, if you try to modify the default copy, it'll work uh, until you do your next Splunk upgrade and um, the, uh, the upgrade will clobber whatever you change in the default directory with the, the uh, and set it back to defaults. So I'm going to edit inputs.conf and you'll see I've got only two stanzas in here. These are the two stanzas I've set up to uh, uh, forward uh, event logs 
for the Linux systems into uh, Splunk. I've got no metric stanzas in there, but very conveniently I've got text edit sessions open over here that have the stanzas that I need to add to uh, start collecting metrics. So I'll just grab that, uh, we'll scroll back up, make sure I got the whole thing. Uh, nope, I missed that first character. I'll copy that. Insert those into myinputs.conf. And just before I save this, I'll um, walk through a couple of the different settings. <clears throat> so there's there's one stanza for each one of the metrics I want to collect. Um, each stanza on the Linux TA is a, a scripted input. If you're not familiar with scripted inputs, what those do is those will execute um, on the interval that I specify. So in this case, every 60 seconds, um, each one of these scripts will execute. And they'll run, and the, um, the output of that script will be captured and sent into uh, Splunk uh, every 60 seconds. Um, <clears throat> the index I want to send to is ITSI underscore IM underscore metrics. That is one of the two default indexes that uh, IT Essentials Work and IT Service Intelligence will use to, um, to uh, gather uh, entity metrics from. So let's go do the uh, Windows forwarders. So here's my uh, event stanzas for the Windows forwarders, um, collecting some application security and system logs, again, just for illustrative purposes to show uh, that we're we can collect the, the event data as well as metrics data. So once again, I'll go over to my trusty text editor <clears throat> and I will, yeah, I've already got it highlighted, so I'll grab my uh, Windows uh, stanzas. And again, I'll step through these really quick. Um, just just to show you, there, there are differences between the, uh, the Windows uh, stanzas and the, uh, the Linux stanzas. Um, of course, you know, different OSs, they're going to look a little bit different. <clears throat> a couple things to look for here. Um, this one is this mode equal single. Uh, the default setting for this when you in install the Windows TA <clears throat> is going to be um, multi-KV. Uh, Multi-KV will take the perfmon data and send it in as event data, and you don't want that. You want metrics data, so you want to make sure you change mode to uh, single. And again, um, I'm using index equals ITSI IM metrics. So I'll save that. And what I'm going to do really quick here is I'm just going to pause uh, while the deployment server catches up and um, starts forwarding in metrics because it could be a few minutes and no need to make you uh, sit through that. Okay, so uh, I'm in the metrics workspace now and uh, I'm starting to see the metrics show up for the Linux systems. I don't see anything yet here for the Windows systems, but they should be uh, coming along um, oh, shortly. Um, we'll give it another uh, couple of refreshes. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll go back over to the IT Essentials Work app and see if they start showing up there. Because this one I can set, oh, there's the two of the Linux systems. I'll set this to refresh every 10 seconds. <clears throat> and we'll just wait until we see at least one of the Windows systems show up. Then I'm going to jump back to the analytics workspace and show you how you can work with metrics freestyle first. <clears throat> May have been a good idea now that I think about it to have set the intervals uh, on the, the forwarders to something more like every 10 or 15 seconds. Um, these would be re refreshing and catching up a little bit quicker. Uh, since we're only sending in every 60 seconds, we're not getting everything at once. Um, but anyway, there's five of my six systems now, so I'm going to drop back to the uh, analytics workspace <clears throat> and first show you what metrics look like there. Okay, so um, anything that starts with a capital letter uh, is a metric coming, it's a perfmon metrics coming from a Windows system. Uh, anything that's all lowercase is going to be um, metrics coming from the Linux systems. 
So I'm going to take a look, uh, my, one of my favorite uh, CPU metrics, and let's look at, oh, I don't know, percent idle. That's a good one to work with. And you'll see, I get a graph when I select that, um, that particular metric, and it shows me, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it shows me the average uh, CPU idle percentage uh, over time. Uh, since we've just started forwarding metrics, I don't have a whole lot of history to year to work with, but you sort of get the idea. Um, it's probably more useful if I split this by host, though. So I'll click on this, split by host, <clears throat> and now I get a separate line, even though they're, you know, they're all like sitting on top of each other because they're all the same percentage basically. Um, but I, I get the uh, the CPU idle percent split out by uh, by host. Nice thing about working with this, uh, I, I don't have to do anything special. I haven't added any apps or anything. Um, this analytics uh, workspace is just part and parcel of uh, Splunk Enterprise and Splunk Cloud. So I don't have to add any apps to work with the stuff. Um, I can save the, any charts that I add to this workspace here. I can save to uh, dashboards. So classic XML dashboards or the new dashboard studio format um, and work with them that way. <coughs> But I think it's far easier uh, to work with, uh, to use apps that are pre-built to provide visualizations for these metrics. So I'm going to switch back over to IT Essentials Work, which, by the way, is a, uh, a free solution. <clears throat> and now I have all six of my systems in there. Um, I'm going to go to this other view, Group by Entity Type. And by the way, this is not intended to be a deep dive into IT Essentials work or IT Service Intelligence. Uh, it was mainly to show you how to get metrics into uh, Splunk and start working with them. But I am going to go over a few of the uh, IT Essentials work uh, capabilities. Um, so when I see uh, uh, my systems here, I get a tile for each one of the different <coughs> pre-configured entity types. Um, out of the box, IT Essentials work has supports for uh, support for all these different entity types. <coughs> um, we have two uh, here for uh, Linux. So if you're reporting um, metrics using CollectD uh, for Linux systems, they'll show up over here on this tile, the star Nix. Um, if you're using the add-on, which we are, you'll see them show up over here under Unix Linux add-on. <coughs> Excuse me. If I cl uh, click on one of these tiles, I'll get a list of all the systems that comprise that entity type. And I can drill down into the individual systems and take a look how each one of them are performing. And as I mentioned, since I don't have a whole lot of history here, um, I don't have a whole lot filling up the timeline. Um, but to show you what it would look like. Um, I do have another uh, IT Essentials work instance in my uh, uh, little lab here. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump over to that and show you what it looks like with a little bit more uh, historical data and a few more entity types in there. Um, I've got some Kubernetes objects that uh, that are sending data into uh, IT Essentials or sending into uh, Splunk. Um, a couple of Windows systems, uh, looks like seven, seven uh, Linux systems, one of which is uh, inactive right now. Um, but I'll click on that, <clears throat> and this is, again, the interface you get with it. Um, I'll just click on one of these systems. This is my virtualization server. <coughs> and you get a better idea of what it looks like when you have a, a full set of history. Um, the nice thing about IT Essentials work is I can also do some uh, basic alerting. So I can set thresholds for when an entity type crosses a certain threshold, like, you know, 60% CPU utilization, 80%, whatever. <coughs> I can have it set up to uh, throw an alert into uh, IT Essentials work. And this is basically what they look like. And I just, I don't want to look at the normals. I just want to look at warnings and criticals. Oops, there we go. Um, so this is telling me which which of my systems um, have been crossing the uh, the warning and critical uh, threshold levels. The nice thing about this is if I decide to um, upgrade IT Essentials work to full-blown IT service intelligence, 
these alerts that I've pre-created with IT Essentials work will become um, uh, notable events in ITSI and any of the entities that are already forwarding into IT Essentials work will also appear in uh, IT Service Intelligence. So with that, um, we will return to the, wrap up the presentation. We're about ready to wrap up this Tech Talk, but before we do, I want to share quickly the resources available to you to continue your journey. You'll receive these essays in a follow-up email as well as the recording. But I wanted to walk through a few of them uh, with you uh, really quickly before we wrap up. One of the first ones here is this uh, Gartner Market Guide for uh, AIOps platforms and uh, gives you some you know, pretty good insight into uh, what's going on in the uh, industry more broadly. Um, once you get to this link, you just uh, fill in the information and download it. <clears throat> There's also this uh, Omdia Universe uh, uh, item on uh, how Splunk is an AIOps market leader uh, in this space. Um, again, fill in the information and download it. We have these um, PDFs also that are uh, really useful. Some um, uh, these essential guide to AI ops um, gives you a, a lot of background information on what it takes to really go from you know legacy um, IT monitoring to a, a true uh, AI ops uh, environment. There's a guide to modern IT service management with AI ops. Uh, again, another um, uh, good good brochure put together by Splunk. Um, there's another PDF that you can get to uh, maximize resiliency and productivity with AI ops. Um, talks a little bit about uh, some of the uh, capabilities of IT service intelligence with uh, adaptive thresholding, um, intelligent incident response, uh, and so on. There's another PDF here, uh, Modern IT Management with AI Ops. Uh, again, a document put together uh, by us to uh, sort of help you on your way to um, getting uh, more of an AI Ops uh, capability. These last four uh, links are links to uh, videos, live videos re uh, recorded at um, our uh, conf uh, from uh, 2021. So these are uh, fairly current, just from last fall. And um, they, they walk through different uh, use cases for AI ops. <coughs> um, some of them are uh, customer uh, driven. So um, Lenovo's and uh, T-Mobile's um, sessions were recorded to uh, show you a little bit about how they're uh, adopting AI ops using Splunk in their environment. Don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search the answers section on IT ops. You can continue the conversation for this talk with its, within the discussion section called Tech Talks, where you'll find all the additional resources. And finally, there is a Splunk Ideas where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas from other customers. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We're excited to share the series with you. Thank you.